Hey, I'm Pete from PMG Auto Care. Welcome back to the channel. Today's video is all about this gorgeous shark blue Porsche Boxster Spider. Look at it. <laughs> So the Boxer Spider, what a special car. It hails from Porsche's GT department and this particular one really looks awesome in that shark blue colour. So what is a Boxer Spider? Well originally it hailed from the 987 variant. When they brought out the Cayman R, they released the, Came, the Boxster Spider to compete with it or to be its stable mate really more than anything. Um, they shared a lot of the same components. When the 981 GT4 was unveiled, the Boxster Spider get a bit more of an upgrade, it got a slightly detuned version of that engine. But finally, when we get to the 718 variant, it really is a drop top GT4. It shares the same running gear, that mental six paw engine, all of the suspension, all of the brakes, and even a lot of the aero styling similar to the GT4. It also has that really unique roof and the back scoops and it's just it's a stunning car it really is they've done an absolute bang up job of it and it would appear to be even more rare than the already rare gt4 version of the cayman so what are we doing with this car well this is something a little bit different the owner of this car is a long-term customer of pmg we've done loads of cars for this guy and well when he got the car from the dealership it had already been coated, or coated pub, probably when it was new, would probably be our estimation of it. And well, it just wasn't living up to his expectation. And initially when he contacted me for my advice about the car, he showed me some blemishes in the paintwork, and I initially thought it was just water spotting. And I recommend it. Get some water spot remover, and that should take care of that. He said, no, it's a bit worse than that. So the car's here now, and well, what we're going to do is remove the old coating and stick on a new coating. Now, old isn't really a fair assessment of that. There's only 1,300 miles in this car, but the owner of this car knows exactly what he's getting whenever he gets a car done with us and the performance that he can expect and how the car should look. And this car, it just isn't there. So what are we going to do now? Well, it's chemical etching is the main, the main sort of defect that is detracting from the looks of this car and certainly it doesn't look like there's a great deal of paint defects on it. The car was probably coated when it was brand new, probably coated in the dealership and to be honest, dealership, even if they bring a detailer in, the detailer is usually limited by time, limited by budget, the coatings are going to be a weaker variant of what you can get in the marketplace. It's not going to be done. The goal there is profit and the dealership is just a bolt on service to them. When you bring the car to a detailer, they really care about it. Their whole or our whole emphasis is making the car look as good as it can. Where a dealership, it's just an add-on, a little something extra on the invoice, but ultimately there isn't the same care and attention lavished on the car. So as you'll see from the walk around, it's got a little bit of road film on it. The owner of this car really likes to use his cars and he intends to use this one, which is great to hear. So we're going to do a wash and I'm going to do what we would do as a decontamination wash for a ceramic coating. So basically I want to see what evidence there is of the coating that's there, how it's behaving. The water behaviour will tell me quite a bit, especially since it's so fresh with such little mileage. I can't really see there being much tar on this and certainly I don't imagine there's going to be a lot of bonded contamination that's going to involve a clay. I think some citrus pre-wash and things like that is going to be enough to pull all of this back out of it and we'll see what we're left with at the end of it all. I'm going to obviously use some iron folate remover. That's a really common contaminant that can play havoc with the water behaviour of a coating. So we'll some, put some of that down and see where it leaves us. But we'll get stuck straight into the wash bay and then we'll know a lot more once the car is dry and under all the lumps for inspection. So let's give it a go and see how we get on.
So that chemical etching, it is pretty bad. The customer really was not wrong about this and um, it's going to take a little bit to sort. Now, as you can see, there doesn't appear to be a huge amount of paint defects on the car, but the coating is definitely damaged. There's no way of rescuing that other than removing it and reapplying a new coating again. Now, I can't slate it or run down or say anything bad about the previous installation of this coating. It, I don't see any high spots. I don't see anything that's missed. I, the, the correction looks pretty good from what I can see, although that chemical agent is so severe that maybe once we remove that, I'm going to see a bit more. But it's not my nature to run a, another detailer or detail down. I'll tell you why. Because the second the car leaves that detail shop, that's where the detailer's responsibility ends. I have seen so many things over the years where we've done a paint correction on a car and I've seen the car not, not even two weeks later. It's been washed a couple of times and the car's wrecked again because it's not been cared for properly. It's, it's one of those things. So from what I can tell, the car 100% is ceramic coated and the paint correction seems to be done pretty well. And anything I can see in the car that is, is there probably has been picked up after the car has been done. But the coating is damaged. How did it get damaged? Well, chemical etching, it could have happened at the dealership. It could have been a real strong chemical when they were prepping the car to bring it in for resale again. They've just, you know, valentin, it's not detail at a dealership, but valentin at a dealership, it really is a time versus money thing. Those guys are paid so little and a lot of them have to buy their own chemicals, they have to supply their own equipment, and they get paid utter pittance. Like you're talking 10, 15 pounds per vehicle to, to clean them. It's just the nature of that business model. So harsh chemicals are often used because they do things fast. And well, if a harsh chemical was put on a ceramic coating on a sunny day, or it was let sit too long, or whatever, that very possibly could have caused this chemical burn. Also, the owner of this car might have washed it themselves at home on a sunny day, took it out, panels roasting hot, spray a lot of citrus around it. It wouldn't be long of damage in the coating as well. The only thing I can tell you for sure is this coating is damaged, it needs removed, it needs replaced. So that's what we're going to do. How do we do it? Gentle machining. So one of the biggest misconceptions about coatings, and it's something that we hear all the time, is that they need wet sand it off. That's only a half truth. They only need wet sand it off if it's a high spot generally. So that's where someone has started to apply coat in the initial stage and they haven't leveled it down and it's been missed and then that is remaining on the vehicle. That can need wet sand it off. But generally, machine polishing is more than enough to take the coating off a car. And that's why we say whenever you get a car coated, don't be polishing it, don't be doing anything other than the correct wash maintenance. Washing a ceramic coated car, <clears throat> especially if it's a really good coating, this does exactly what it's meant to. All of your maintenance is based in your wash bay. And that's it. You don't need to be topping them up. You don't need to be doing anything other than maintaining them properly to a schedule. We're going to do a video on that someday soon about how to maintain a, a ceramic coated car. We hold open days here in the shop for it. If it's something you're interested in and you're based over here, feel free to keep an eye on our socials. We will post them up. And next year, we're planning to run them every six weeks. So that's something to keep an eye for. But anyway, getting back to this car. So this is going to be a bit different than our usual, where we normally go into the sledge to knock out the the heavy defects. With this one, we're going in with a surgeon's scalpel. We're going to be going in with a very, very fine finishing pad and some very fine finishing compound. All I'm looking to do is a very gentle machining process to get through that chemical burn. And then that may in itself actually show some defects that are being hidden by the chemical burn. We just won't know when we get there. But we're gonna, if that doesn't work, we'll just gradually build that up and up and up in aggression until we get to the sweet spot. But I don't want to remove any more than I have to with this car. I don't want to be inducing micromarin if I don't have to. The finish in the car, is a little dull. It's definitely not as sharp as what we would get a, a car before we apply, apply coating. So this stage is essentially a bit like our dueling stage, but we'll see how we go. So yeah, we'll get stuck into that and then we'll reassess things as we go along. 
but this car is going to look amazing whenever it's finished. It already looks good for, for uh, all the right reasons now, but we're going to really take this to another level and it's just going to show you the difference of what an expert can do. It's all right with a car that, you know, doesn't look great, but what can we do with a car that already looks good? I think you're going to be shot. Already, things aren't entirely going to plan. We started in with a really soft combination there, which was a black finishing pad and then some um, roots, um, super fine, really, really gentle combination. But as that was lifting out that chemical burn, which to be honest, I don't think the camera is truly putting it across, but once we lifted that chemical burn, it was showing paint defects that was being, well, not quite covered but disguised by the chemical burn so I've stepped the compound up a little to D300 that seems to be working well again it's fitting in with our gentle approach we want to be as gentle as we can but there is some actual paint correction involved at this stage no big deal it's turning out perfect so that's all we can hope for and hopefully that's how it's going to be over the rest of the car is complete it did throw up some some defects underneath the chemical burn or the chemical burn was certainly hiding it but there was nothing on that car which was which you know overly challenging we just it's a slow process that you take your time with we did have to up the aggression a little more than what we initially started with and then some of the, the stages on the car rather than as heavy cutting the whole panel if there was a little defect that needed a little bit more we just buzzed it out with a three inch machine and then continued on our way car looks amazing it has got such a sharp finish to it now and when we lay down the coatings it's only going to sharpen that up even more i think the customer is going to be quite surprised that it looks quite a bit different. I know that the chemical etching was the thing that was the goal of removing and because that was visually detracting from the car, but the sharpness and gloss of this finish now, I think is going to take them by surprise. It really looks fantastic. So now all we have to do, get all the dust off and then get all the coatings laid down. We're going to be doing crystal serum ultra and our own special sauce on the top. Then we're going to be laying some C5 wheel armor down, removing the wheels coating those in the calipers and then coating the glass. The glass is actually the one coating on the car that has held up pretty well. Aside from the windscreen, that's it down a little, but we're just gonna reapply it all anyway. And then I was quite surprised there was no fabric protection on the hood. So that's something that we're gonna button up as well. Probably a full day's work and just laying down all these coatings properly, but really enjoyable at this stage. It's gonna just tie the whole car together. So let's get it done.
So that's it all finished. So it just means there's one thing left to do and that's show you guys it finished. Doesn't that look mega? It looks so good. It's such a beautiful car. I think it looks perfect from every angle. There's not a bad place to stand and look at that car. Just stunning. Porsche really know how to build excellent cars. They really do. And the end result as well. I'm so pleased with how the car turned out. I can't wait to see what the owner thinks of this. I know that in his head he's maybe just expecting I'll come and see this and the chemical action is going to be gone, but the sharpness finish and gloss of this car is in a different level than what it was before, and it already looked pretty good. So, yeah, uh, it'll be interesting to get his reaction. Now, I don't want the takeaway from this video to be that ceramic coatings are poor, or that I'm in any way running down the initial detail and ceramic coating installation on this car. I'm not. I'm more hoping that it'll show you that they're not total foolproof systems and that you, if you're going to go for one, you need to be dedicated in that you are prepared to maintain it properly. And the maintenance of them is really quite simple. It's all wash based, but it's just about using the right chemicals in the right procedure. As I say, we're going to do a video on that, but it really makes it a joy. Once a car's coated, it's a joy to look after. It makes it really simple to maintain. And the wash process, it really isn't any different than what we would recommend for washing, even a non-coated car. It's about washing your car safely, but a few little tweaks of chemicals to something that's a little bit more coating friendly will just keep your coating performing at its best all the time. And if you're going to invest the money in coating a car, make the extra mile and invest in the steps to look after it. So, that's us wrapped up. I couldn't even tell you what the next video was going to be yet. We've got quite a few lined up. It's finally our Christmas break, although you're going to be seeing this video after that. But that wraps us up for 2022. Thanks for watching everything so far this year, guys. And as always, any comments, criticism, we want to hear it all. What would you like to see us do in the channel? But for now, thanks for watching, and we'll catch you in another one.